There is a problem with these two monitors, and I'm sure it's nothing common. I'm not sure if this setup is still a good choice, no matter how good it looks. So I'm going to try to discover the best monitor configuration, two, three, or even four of them. How many screens are enough without compromising on resolution, panel technology, or screen size? I'll give you my answer in this video, and I bet you won't like it. It's clear that social media has turned us into dopamine addicts, making us dependent on different distractions. No matter what we're doing, we always want to have a screen or a podcast to listen to. For some time now, I've realized that although two monitors are useful to work with, attention, because this might sound strange, and it is, I've realized that when I'm working from my laptop, I'm much more productive than on my usual desktop. Yes, from a less powerful device with a much smaller screen. It's hard for me to pinpoint the reason, but it could be because I never use the laptop for anything other than work, so my brain doesn't associate it with anything else. My other theory is that with two screens, I don't pay 100% attention to what I'm doing because because besides what I'm working on, there's always something else in front of me that's trying to get my attention. In any case, this has led me to believe that although I'm happy with my monitor setup, maybe I need to change something. That's why the best thing I could do right now is to remove these two monitors and try a single model while checking out the current market situation. So this brand new Asus monitor features a 27 inch size screen with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 with a higher refresh rate up to 180 Hz. So we'll see how those extra 40 FPS behave. It's very similar to what I already had, but it allows me to see if IPS technology has evolved or if it's just the same but cheaper. At this point, it might not be necessary to mention it, but we're looking at a quality product really well designed. The stand allows for all kinds of movements, and despite being against the wall, it has a very well designed back panel. For minimalists, we've gained not only space but also ergonomics. With two monitors, we had to use an arm to gain some space, but with one, we can use the stand that comes with the monitor, which has a very small footprint. Ironically, the stand includes a slot for your phone, so you can have two screens in your range of view. I imagine this is useful for some, but remember, my goal is to avoid distractions. As I've said, I really like this stand for the small footprint it has and the details are very well achieved. It even has small marks for us to see in what position we want it to be. After a few days of daily using just one monitor, I've noticed that I missed some extra space. However, the things I usually have in that space are background applications like Spotify, YouTube videos or podcasts. We might miss them, but as the word says, they're in the background and are secondary activities and removing them is probably a good move. Where we can really miss that secondary monitor is for tasks that support the main activity. For example, if I'm following a tutorial, it's very helpful to have it on that secondary screen. Or when I'm using Blender, it's great to expand windows to gain workspace. I'd like to say that I do the same thing in Adobe Premiere Pro when I'm editing these videos, but every time I try, it crashes and closes the program which is another of a problem. And in Blender, we have some issues I'll discuss later. I understand that there are legitimate uses for a second monitor, but it's definitely not for me. Sometimes less is more. I must admit that I'm a tryhard myself in everything I do, and that's why the 180Hz has been a small step forward in the competitive experience. It's not a huge number, but there's something where I've noticed a big difference. With the advancement of faster monitors, we've had significant problems that brands have addressed, and here is where paying for a brand can make a difference. ELMB caught me off guard. Extreme low motion blur. I didn't believe it would be so significant. I've seen many monitor brands, but Asus does it very well here. Monitors are getting faster over time, but pixels have some delays changing their colors with these IPS panels, and this effect is creating motion blur. While many games create this purposely, in shooters it's just a result of a very fast monitor and pixels that can't keep up. Without getting into details, ELMB tries to solve this problem. It works best with high frame rates, above 120 FPS I would say, and below that there's not much motion blur, so we won't miss it. This combined with overdrive is a great combination to increase clarity and visual quality when taking advantage of those 180 Hz. Something practical that Asus does is to allow configuration adjustments with the mouse instead of always using the on-screen menu and joystick, which is less user-friendly. I like to protect my eyes by reducing brightness and using dark themes, avoiding even white in Word documents. I frequently need to change this configuration for color correction and with the desktop application now, I can do it quickly. And playing is great, but it's taking less and less of my screen time. Color representation is becoming more important, and it feels like I'm almost using the same panel as before. It's an IPS LED with a 97 
excellent percentage of DCI-P3 coverage, meaning it has excellent color spectrum coverage, especially for a device designed primarily for gaming. It's versatile enough for both gaming and working. The workspace is excellent, the resolution is perfect for the screen size, I believe 27 inches and 2K are the perfect match, and it's no surprise this resolution is gaining popularity. I wouldn't recommend any other resolution for this screen size. When I tried 4K monitors I realized that the workspace is the same because at 4K on 27 inches we need to use 150% of scaling, making the elements too small to work with otherwise. So we end up with the same workspace as a 2K monitor but with higher pixel density. Increasing resolution is positive, but doing it too much up to 4K impacts performance so much that it's often not worthy. Compared to 1080p, our graphics card now has to render 4 instances of the same game instead of one. This can be a problem, pushing the graphics card to its limits. This monitor even has a mode for enthusiasts who prefer 24 inches for gaming, but want to keep those 27 inches for other activities, allowing them to achieve better performance. I'm sure this, along with the price drop, is making this kind of monitors the new standard. Their balance of resolution, size and performance is practically perfect. And this monitor is going to become my daily tool for everything, but I feel it will be quite temporary. Working with only one monitor has made me realize the large amount of space I was wasting. While we think two monitors are for better space and ergonomics, it's not always the case. In my experience, 27-inch monitors are almost too big. Now, with a single monitor, I make better use of the space, and it will be my new tool. But I'm not sure for how long, I still need more space, but I want it to be in the same monitor, that's what I've learned in this video, not to use a secondary one because I just want more space for my main activity, not to support secondary activities. Also remember that monitors are among the most power-consuming components of our setup. On average, they can consume around 100 watts each, sometimes even more than the computer itself. Remember I said having a secondary monitor for Blender was great? Well, it's not always the case, now you might think I'm complaining about a non-issue. But in Blender, we have several panels or windows within one monitor, and the program's functionality works depending on which window is currently the mouse. If we have a secondary monitor with a separate window, it's like having it minimized. We have to click to use it, which is counterintuitive and forces us to go against the software workflow. Here, a single monitor would be more beneficial, ideally with more size and resolution. I've tried 4K monitors and just because I don't use one doesn't mean they're bad. I simply haven't found the right one. I think I'll find the solution but that's for another video. I made some step forwards with this new change, but there's still a way to go. What surprised me the most is not missing the secondary monitor. I thought it would be the night and day, but it wasn't. This step brings my setup closer to something more minimalist and ergonomic, which I'm aiming for. This is a clear example of how sometimes less is more, but I think we all need to try to realize this. That's why I'm sure the market will soon take a different direction than the current trend. I believe the multi-monitor trend mainly comes from the streamers who often need them, and seeing them with multiple monitors makes us think that we need them too. What do you think and what setup do you believe is the best considering the number of monitors, their size and resolution? Leave your opinion down below, I hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one. Un saludo.